I want to spend the next couple of minutes talking to you about stress, explaining what stress is and how we can cope effectively when stress is persistent or overwhelming. Stress results from any changes in the environment that pushes beyond our normal limits. These changes can be both external from the environment or internal from our thoughts. It is the process of and our ability to adapt to these changes that determine our ability to cope with stress effectively. Stress can be positive. It can help us to achieve our goals, such as training for a marathon or preparing for an exam. These events can push us beyond our limits, but they are short term and there's an element of choice in them. Stress can, however, overwhelm us if we don't have the necessary resources to adapt to unwanted changes or change that might be beyond our control. An example of change, stress and adaptation processes might be the weather. On a cold and stormy day, it might be miserable, wet and cold. And, you know, if we don't wear a suitable coat, it's going to increase our misery and make it quite difficult for us to get out and about and do what we need to do. A coat is an example of adaptation that maintains our normal, almost comfortable state of being. If we don't have a coat at all, or our coat isn't waterproof, or isn't quite up to scratch, then we don't have sufficient resources, sufficient coping resources, to be able to go out and about in the weather. While the cold and wet remains, without effective adaptation, we're going to remain in that stressful state. Our ability to um, deal with stress uh, depends very much on our coping resources. And coping can come in many different forms. We may take a more practical approach in trying to solve whatever problem that's causing the change, or we might try to seek out help to um, alleviate some of the emotional distress that might come from that change happening. Research shows that the more practical ways of coping, whether that's from an emotional or practical perspective, is the most effective. Emotional avoidance, however, um, has been shown by research not to be the best form of coping that we can engage in. Emotional avoidance is where we try and avoid the negative emotion by avoiding whatever is happening in our lives at that point. It could be things like turning to alcohol, food or drugs to try and help us cope with the negative feelings that come from that event. Over short periods of time, it, it's not so much of a problem, but over time, engaging in emotional avoidance can lead to physical or mental health problems. So to conclude, as we go into winter, make sure that you either have an actual or metaphorical coat to protect you um, for what, from what comes in life. We can't prepare for everything, but we can make sure that we have things in place to help us when we need them.